said, but in fact, we are uh, well in uh, excess of a quorum. We acknowledge here with the guest through Attorney Dana Alberto. Please uh, acknowledge the group here. Good morning. The Committee on Electoral Reforms and People's Participation would like to acknowledge the presence of our distinguished guests, namely from the Commission on Elections, we have Executive Director, Attorney Teopisto E. L. Nas Jr. From National Printing Office, and also Director from Commission on Elections, Director Jeannie V. Flororita and Director Maria Norina S. Tangaro Casingal. And Director Esther L. Villaflor Rojas, Director Efrain Q. Baguid. Okay. From National Printing Office, we have Acting Chief Engineer Benedicto M. Cabral, Acting Chief Mr. Dante So, Attorney Maria Ethel Christine Din. From Philippine Postal Corporation, we have Postmaster General and CEO, Mr. Luis D. Carlos. From Act CIS Party List, we have Attorney Mac Jefferson Mancinido and Attorney Jacqueline Vidal. From Sagip Party List, we have Attorney Kizette de la Cruz. From PDP Laban, we have Ms. Rufina Arcega. Also from PDP Laban, we have Attorney Melvin Matibag. From NAMFREL, we have Mr. Eric Jude O. Alvia and Ms. Jaya Ann Torne. Meron po bang hindi natawag? That will be all, Senator Aimee Marcos. Yes. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you very much, uh, Attorney Dana. The truth of the matter is, as discussed with, uh, with our minority leader, um, the two items on the agenda are actually already, uh, they already reached committee report level during the 18th Congress. So unahin na lang po natin uh, for uh, the minority leader, his uh, bill which para kay ko hindi naman yata ang controversial masyado, itong abolition of the printing of the voters' information and instruction sheet. In truth, where's the committee uh, uh, chair? Meron na tayong committee report niyan eh. At saka uh, may position na rin yung ating COMELEC nung panahon na yun. Subalit, hindi nga umabot sa diskusyon at uh, hindi napasa. So, um, we're going right back to that and replacing instead the printing of the voters' information and instruction sheet with the um, with, uh, broadcast digital electronic online media as well as the posting of the same in conspicuous public areas in every barangay. Imbes na pinapadala na halos napakaraming hindi nakakatanggap, parang mas mainam na lang i-post yan. So, uh, we would like to sponsor, therefore, uh, to uh, introduce this bill at the same time, uh, obtain the COMELEC's position therewith. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Madam Chairperson. And magandang umaga po sa lahat and to Senator Robin Padilla. Uh, dito sa Senado, may tinatawag kaming happy bills. Ang tawag ko naman dito sa bill na to, Ilocano Bill. Sinabi ko kay Chair yun eh. Ito po ay bill na kung maging batas ay makakatipid po ang ating gobyerno. Ang aking palagay, marami na uh, aksay ang pera rito or unnecessary exercise. Magkano po ba, uh, ED, Atty. Elnas, ang budget po para dito? Uh, every, every election time, no? We ask for this every election cycle lang, no? Is it every day or uh, every year or every election cycle? Yes, every election cycle. Every NLA lang po, national and local yes, elections. Yes, national and local elections. Yeah, good, good to distinguish that. So, magkano po yun uh, halagang involved po rito? Good morning, Madam Chair, Your Honors. Uh, <clears throat> as far as the expenses for the printing and deployment and distribution of the voters' information sheet, uh, for the 2022 national and local elections, 
we spend 355 million 224,137 uh, all in all uh, from printing down to the distribution of this BIS, Your Honors. Thank you for that. So at least nakita natin yung yung halaga na pwede po nating uh, matipid at uh, may lagay na sa ibang bagay. So I'm sure hindi naman 100% yun because kailangan pa natin i-post sa uh, conspicuous public places and then the digital digital uh, counterpart. But at least uh, we will be able to save a substantial amount. Edi, are you confirming that? Yes, Your Honor. And so, gusto ko lang i-emphasize na for purposes of the barangay and SK elections, we don't uh, send uh, VIS. Uh, because the law does not require it. Yes, Your yes, Honor. Yun nga. Ito, yes. ito you're, you are forced to do it because the law requires it. Yes, Your Honor. Precisely. Precisely. Kaya nga, this is the what we're doing now. So, so is the COMELEC also excited about our proposal to save money? Uh, Yes, Your Honor, ah, not okay. only so to save right. money, Your Honor, but as well as the manpower, uh, the efforts, and we can focus on the election side uh, as far as the national and local elections, or in case barangay and SK elections, Your Honor. Kasi kahit na nasa batas naman ito, if you look at past uh, elections, uh, the, our compliance, hindi mo naman din masabi lahat na padalhan, lahat na katanggap, kung nakatanggap man, hindi before the election, after na, mga ganun, so... Tama ba, Edi? Is that, is that a reasonable uh, statement? Y yes, Your Honor. Uh, and aside from that, uh, with the advent of the technology, uh, Facebook, social media, and other platforms, Your Honors, uh, we can substitute uh, this uh, law uh, as far as the implementation or information on the part of the registered voters as far as their uh, voting centers and the mm -hmm. candidates within their constitu constituency, Your Honors. Basta makatipid tayo. Yeah. Tama. Okay, sige. So thank you, Madam Chair. You lang naman gusto ko establish it. <laughs> yes, thank you very much for the Locano measure. We're uh, fully behind it. And also, if uh, we may uh, recognize uh, Senators uh, Ronald De La Rosa as well as Francis Tolentino, I'd just like to observe and put on record the fact that in uh, 2022, the uh, VIS was so delayed that only 46 million out of 65.7 million voters ever received a VIS. As a matter of fact, uh, the uh, Sambo Peninsula, the entire Sambuanga Peninsula, not a single voter received uh, their copies. This is reminiscent of a similar delay that occurred in May of 2019 when an error, ito naman nagkamali ng VIIS, was discovered prior to the polls. Nagkagulo-gulo lahat ng tao at hindi mahanap ang kanilang presinto kasi mali-mali yung uh, lumabas. And it affected the printing schedule of the NPO, forced the Comelec on bank to stop the delivery of the uh, mistaken VIIS before the polls, which wasted 244 million of taxpayers' money. So I think uh, this uh, bill is well taken and uh, perhaps uh, we already have a committee report from the 18th Congress. With that as a basis, perhaps we can constitute a working group to draft a new uh, updated report, including the findings of the 2022 elections. Is, uh, is that workable uh, with the COMELEC? Pwede, pwede natin ulitin na lamang yung, uh, uh, yung dating report at the update, including the findings of 2022. Yes, Your Honor. Okay, thank you very much. So the committee uh, endorses this, and uh, we will proceed Madam to Madam Chair, first like. Thank you. Thank you very much, Minority Leader. We will now go to the more controversial issue, which already, as a matter of fact, uh, had reached. Um, also, the committee uh, report stage in the past, no? So, um, in fact, there was a party list reform committee report already and a substitute bill, which was the output from 3TWG. Um, it is our hope that this much needed reform in the party list system will finally be enacted in the 19th Congress. The committee notes that the Atong Paglaum versus Comelec case um, 
held that the uh, clear intent and express wording and party list structure set forth in Section 5 of Paragraph 1 and 2, Article 6 of the 1987 Constitution cannot possibly be disputed, that the party list system is not merely for sectoral parties but also for non-sectoral parties. So, yun ang pagkaintindi natin ng Corte Suprema. Unfortunately, such interpretation also made the party list system susceptible to abuse um, with the opening up to non-sectoral parties. Likewise, the voice of those who are truly marginalized and underrepresented seem to be drowned out in the sea of political parties and party list groups with questionable, if not entirely non-existent, advocacies. Uh, it's obvious that the circumstances have helped create the evil that was sought to be prevented by the framers of the Constitution. That uh, is, the ever-widening social, economic, and political inequality in our, rep in our representation. The primordial issue, therefore, that we have to discuss is how far can we go in defining the party list system. Yan ang uh, malaking tanong at sana matulungan tayo ng iba't ibang kinatawan ng ating mga party list. Ano? So, siguro, uh, yan ang una nating pag-uusapan. I'd also um, like uh, to make certain introductory remarks with, re with regard to nuisance candidates. But umpisa na muna natin yung sa party list at marami po kayo narito. Sinong mauuna? Uh, ang Comelec ba may position? Kasi you participated already in the party list uh, TWGs that we conducted in the previous Congress. So, uh, and uh, I believe that uh, quite a few of our party lists had also submitted uh, at that point uh, various um, position papers with regard to the same. So, uh, anyone from Comelec, Attorney Elnas, it seems to be only you. Uh, <coughs> Andito pala yung mga author ng, uh, ng, uh, ng party list uh, amendments. So, manyari pwedeng uh, mag-introductory mark si uh, uh, Senator De La Rosa, please. Thank you, Madam Chair. Uh, Thank you for giving me the opportunity to deliver my opening statement kasi tatlong hearings ngayon na very important. Lipat-lipat tayo. Uh, si Senator Tulitino at Senator uh, Pimentel ay palipat-lipat din. Very important mga hearings ngayon. Uh, Magandang baga po sa ating lahat. Foremost, let me manifest my appreciation to our hardworking chairperson, Senator Amy Marcos, for immediately tackling the measures that seek to amend RA CB 941 or the Party List System Act. This public hearing is very timely in light of the allegations that there are groups that have used and abused our party list system. During the 18th Congress, as a result of the series of hearings that, res that this representation has conducted on the missing minors who were allegedly recruited by leftist groups, one of the recommendations of the Committee on Public Order and Dangerous Drugs was to amend RA CB 941. We recommended that after observing due process of law, we should be focused on the outright refusal or cancellation of, of registration of any national, regional, or sectoral party organization or coalition that advocates subversive dogma and pursuant thereof undertakes criminal acts towards this goal. In line with this, the recommended legislative action is now contained in my Senate Bill Number 201. Apart from this, I also propose as additional ground for refusal or cancellation of registration the direct or indirect participation of the party or organization in acts detrimental to the best interest of the government. To overthrow the government or diminish its powers or to be associated by any means to rebels or proscribed terrorist persons or groups pursuant to RA 11479 otherwise known as the Anti-Terrorism Act of 2020. My goal in proposing the amendments to our party list law is to ensure 
that those who have been granted the opportunity to participate in the party system are those who could genuinely contribute to the formulation and enactment of appropriate legislation that will benefit the nation. There is no place in our government for those individuals or groups who aim to destabilize our duly constituted government from within. I hope we are one in putting an end to the bastardization of the party system. Let us restore the dignity of the system as originally intended by the framers of the 1987 Constitution. I look forward to a fruitful discussion with our colleagues and resource persons. Thank you, Madam Chair. Thank you very much, uh, Senator uh, De La Rosa. In addition, I am also a, an author of uh, a uh, party list uh, uh, bill. And uh, in addition to the proposals of Senator Bato, I um, sought to classify into two the party lists, one as political party lists or coalitions thereof, and secondly, the sectoral organizations. And then uh, there was a reservation of 50-50 in the event of a tie, in the event of an odd number, there were also qualifications. Similarly, um, there was an effort to state that sectoral parties, organizations, and coalitions thereof should truly represent the marginalized and underrepresented sectors. Um, I tried to provide the definition of the same so that um, it refers to those expressly men mentioned in the Constitution uh, that are by nature economically, politically, culturally, or socially marginalized or underrepresented in the mainstream. Fisher folk, persons with disabilities, veterans, overseas workers, and similar sectors. Parang ganun yung definition, kaya siguro tulungan na rin ninyo yun. It was carried in the committee report. Further, um, we made the effort upon suggestion of the COMELEC to require parties, political parties or sectoral party lists, to file their petition for registration in the party list system much, much earlier than ordinary candidates, not later than 90 days for the usual candidates, but not later than one year before the election in the case of party list nominees, simply because the COMELEC needed time to verify the uh, registration and other details regarding the party list. So, yun, pinabaan ko yung registration para may verification period. And then, um, like Senator uh, De La Rosa, I also added additional grounds for removal or cancellation of registration, such as material misrepresentation, participated in acts detrimental to the best interest of government, intention to overthrow, etc., and so on. And uh, as well, um, we have uh, the manner of voting, that in lieu of two votes, the bill provides each voter shall be entitled to three votes. That is to say, a member of his House of Representatives legislative district, one for a political party and another one for a sectoral or uh, other organization. So those were the items that uh, we discussed. And in addition, uh, thereafter in the in the effort to put together a minority leader, a new omnibus election code, dinagdag ko rin yung section 70 na may substitution, kasi nagkakagulo sa substitution ng party list. Parang uh, nalilito na yung komele, eh, kasi pag nanalo na yung party list, nagja-jumble-jumble yung pangalan, hindi yung mga original nominees. So kung maare, no substitution shall be allowed for nominees who withdrew their acceptance to the nomination. Hindi naman pwedeng papalit-palit eh, kasi di maintindihan kung ninegotiate ba yan, o ano bang klaseng kasunduan yan, di na natin alam eh. Uh, also, um, in the event that uh, all its nominees, because this has occurred, all its nominees withdraw, such party will be deemed to have withdrawn. Kasi naguguluhan rin ang COMELEC pag walang uh, pangalan na naibigay, biglang nagpupimiglas pa rin, eh sino na mauupo? 
So also within 10 days after the publication of the list of nominees, file with the commission a verified petition seeking to deny due course or to cancel the nomination of nominees on the ground that it's material misrepresentation. So sinasaayos lang natin yung sistema kasi naguguluhan tayong lahat at uh, nagkakagulatan kung sino talaga ang uupo. So those were the addition. Um, I think... Um, in one lang, not just last na lang, um, the uh, final one was that there was another um, addition by Congressman Marcoleta in the House versions, and that is that an additional ground for the removal or cancellation of party list registration should be added when the registered name, including the name in the ballot, is confusingly similar or perceivably colorable imitation of the name of an existing party list. Okay. Yes, Senator Talentino, please. Thank you, Madam Chair. I, I thank you for allowing me to speak. I associate myself with the introductory statement made by Senator De La Rosa, as well as Chairman Aimee Marcos. Indeed, it is about time that we amend the obsolete provisions of the Omnibus Election Code, as well as the though not that age-old archaic provisions of the party list system. Madam President, I, I totally agree when you cited atong uh, Paglaom versus Comelec, a 2013 case. And I would like to advise the, the lawyers here present. There is a provision in our, in our Constitution which provides that this is Article Article 6, Section 5, which contains this phrase, as may be provided for by law. Yeah. Meaning to say, Congress, the Senate, has the right to amend the provisions, even though there are Supreme Court decisions. Even though we have uh, Ankla versus Comelec, we have uh, Banat versus Comelec, Ambagong Bayani versus Comelec, and even the cited atong paglaom. Alalahanin po natin yung decision po ng Korte Suprema sangayon sa Constitution natin ay pwedeng baguhin ng Kongreso. Pwede pong baguhin. Isa lamang po sa kasaysayan ng Supreme Court at sa Supreme Court na rin ng Amerika na nag-declare na hindi pwedeng baguhin. Sa mga abogado rito, kahit sa kapulisan, Senator Bato, ang sinabi po ng U.S. Supreme Court sa Miranda versus Arizona. Supreme Court stated, the U.S. Supreme Court stated, and this was adopted by the Philippine Supreme Court, our ruling is constitutional and cannot be reversed by Congress. Yun po yung Miranda versus Arizona na nagbunga ng Miranda rights. You have the right to remain silent. Anything you say can be used against you. Dito po sa mga sinabing kaso, kasama po yung Atong versus Paglaom, hindi naman po sinasabi ng Supreme Court that this is a constitutional ruling na hindi pwedeng baguhin. Manapay sa ating zaligang batas, nakalagay po doon, ang Kongreso, under this phrase, unless provided for by law, can change, can amend, can modify the party list system. So sa ngayon po ako sa sinabi ni Senator De La Rosa, ni Chairman Aimee Marcos, and I will... I will uh, I anticipate to be an active participant during the floor deliberations as we continue to amend the Omnibus Election Code as well as the provisions of the law being tackled today. Maraming salamat po, Madam Chair. Yes, thank you very much uh, for asserting once again the uh, power um, to uh, make laws here in the Senate as well as in Congress. And I would like also to cite that in addition to Senator De La Rosa's version, uh, which I included in mine as well, uh, let's be uh, aware also of uh, certain movements in the House as well as in the public where uh, comments have been made by PCIJ and the Makabayan Bloc that in many cases, political families use the party list system um, as a backdoor to gain seats to Congress. So 70, according to uh, uh, this study, 70 of the 177 accredited party list groups had nominees connected to political clans or incumbent officials. They then recommended that we introduce an anti-dynasty provision in the party list system act. 
So, yun naman ang uh, lumabas sa ating media. And if you will note, um, in the House, there is a Makabayan block version of the party list revisions that I would like you to comment on as well. And um, it's simply that uh, there are certain disqualifications here. Unang-una, yung makameka mag-anak na mayor, governor, etc. Ikalawa, yung uh, related by consanguinity or affinity to the third degree to incumbent government officials. Naku, ang dami-dami madi-disqualify. Baka mahirapan to. Anyway, and uh, also disqualified are those appointed or served office as bureau chief up to any position in the cabinet within five years. Any provincial director of the PNP or battalion commander of the AFP or any higher position within five years. And finally, those whose income is more than the base pay of a party list member of the House of Representatives. So this is the other end of uh, the stick, I believe. So kung may nagsasabi na may uh, anti-terrorist suspects, meron rin naman nagsasabi na puros kontratista na lamang at napakayayaman ang nauupo sa party list. So, uh, Senator Padilla, I hear a noisy and violent reaction from you. Would you like to add? Magandang magandang uh, umaga po sa ating uh, napakagandang uh, ginang na tagapangulo at magandang umaga po sa lahat ng ating mga bisita. Ako po ay uh, una sa lahat, bismillah. Ako po ay uh, uh, napakaganda po ng mga panimulang salitang binitawan ng ating ginang na tagapangulo at ni Senator Bato de la Rosa at ni Senator Tolentino at ang pinakamaganda ko pong narinig ay yung huling sinambit ng ating ginang na tagapangulo na yung pong ating uh, party list system. Napakalinaw po kasi noong uh, Republic Act na nag, uh, sa batas po nito. Napakaganda po nung RA 7941. Ang sinasabi po dyan kasi talagang kailangan ay mga manggagawa, mangingisda, magsasaka, kababaihan, maralit ang tagalungsod, kabataan, mga katutubong komunidad, OFW, mga veteranong sundalo, profesional, may mga kapansanan at mga matatanda. Eh, nakalulungkot po ginang tagapangulo sapagkat uh, parang hindi ko po nakikita ito. Ang atin pong mga mangingisda at mga manggagawa at atin pong mga magsasaka ay eh, nandoon pa rin sa kalagayan na hindi pa rin sila napapakinggan na dapat ay napapakinggan na sapagkat merong RA7941. Ang pinakamalungkot pa po ay yung huli niyo pong sinabi. Ay karamihan po sa ating mga party list ay kilalang mga contractors. Medyo... Uh, pasensya na po kayo kung medyo napalakas ang yun, napaganon po ako. Sapagkat uh, ito po ay isang bagay na pag-urak daan sa RA7941. Siguro magsama-sama na lang yung contractor, gumawa sila ng isang party list, hindi yung bawat isa meron silang party list. Kaya sana po, uh, itong mga panukala na ito, ay mapagtibay po natin kung ano po yung uh, talagang wisdom no RA7941. Alam niyo po, uh, mahal na ginang na taga-Paulo, ito pong uh, ganitong sitwasyon, kapag hindi po natin ito hinarap, ay nagiging katawa-tawa po tayo sa 8% ng mga Pilipino dito sa ating bayan. Sapagkat ito pong RA7941 na ito, ang nire-represent po nito ay yung 8% ng mga Pilipino na hirap na hirap sa kanilang buhay. Hindi ko po maintindihan kung bakit yung 20% pa ng ating mga kababayan na namumuhay na naman ng mga palasak at mga talagang mga mayayaman naman ay kailangan pang makinabang dito sa party list system. Yun lamang po. Maraming salamat po yun ang uh, taga-Pangulo. Ay, Maraming salamat. Ang ating minority leader may dadagdag din. Yes, uh, ito kung maalala ni Senator Bato nung Sona, nag-joke ako sa kanila eh. Nung pinapakita na sa screen na may naglanding ng helicopter, 
Sabi ko, teka muna, baka party list congressman ang bumaba dun sa helicopter na yun. Margin ako. Yun, ewan ko naalala ni Senator Bato yung joke ko lang naman yun. Pero mukhang totoo yata na some of our party list congressmen arrived by chopper to, to, to Congress. Ah, so, yun nga. So, kung pang marginalized uh, sectors yun, parang... Uh, klarong klaro na na hindi hindi na po nagkatotoo. Apo. Thank you. Thank you, Madam Chair. So, tama po. Medyo uh, mahirap intindihin at mahirap i-buo uh, itong uh, party list uh, definitions. Ano? Kung maaari, uh, talagang kinakailangan talakayin natin yung, uh, yung um, problema namin ni uh, Senator De La Rosa na wag naman yung may kaso pa sa gobyerno yung mga sinasabi na um, conspiring for the downfall of the administration hindi naman yata pwedeng ganun ano pero sa kabila nito wag naman yung sobra-sobra na halos sinasabi na for sale ang party list eh, talaga naman ang sagwa naman pakinggan. Pero nauulit-ulit, katulad nga ni uh, Senator Padilla, eh, totoo naman na marami tayong balitang ganyan. Kaya uh, nagmumukhang pulubi ang mga senador kung ikaw kumpara. <laughs> Pero ganun pa man. Eh, siguro we'll uh, ask from the Comelec, how do we bring these uh, two sides, these uh, two abuses, as it were, um, to an end, finally? Thank you, Madam Chair, Your Honors. As far as the Commission on Elections is concerned, uh, we incorporated already our comments, suggestions, and recommendations dito po sa proposed omnibus uh, election code na ginagawa. Nandun na po incorporated ng lahat. And uh, pag, maraming salamat po dito sa pagbigay ng COMELEC ng mahabang panahon so that we can verify uh, the existence of this party list uh, down to the precinct, down to the municipal and barangay level, as well as uh, it will give us time, ample time, for the printing of the official ballots. Kasi isasama natin yung pangalan ng party list doon sa balota mismo. Maraming salamat po. I think, uh, I think Madam Chair, hindi uh, ba registration of uh, party list can be done anytime? Diba? You can you can find it anytime. Kasi parang parang kaya kung yari ngayon, kung yari ngayon, uh, voter registration ongoing. Kung yari nasipan ako sa PDP laban ni Attorney Matibag, oh. so papano ngayon yun? So I can form my own political party anytime. Di ba wala namang ano yun? Wala namang schedule yun. Mayroon lang deadline po, Your Honors. Mayroon ka lang kaming deadline because we have Nabawal to fight. Nabawal na. Yes. Uh, yes uh, you more, have to, more of yeah. negative. Mayroon, yes, mayroon yes. certain period of time before election na bawal na mag-form or mag-register ng new parties kasi you're now preparing for the election. Eh. Parang, Tama po okay, yan, it's, it's Your a, Honors. Parang negative period siya, more of. That's right. So that uh, we have uh, ample time to verify the actual existence and advocacy of said group. Uh, however, the posting of the nominees will be at what point? Within the one year, presumably, no? Or is it also within the 90-day period required? Within the 90-day period required of the regular district candidates? Now, as far as the nominees is concerned, Your uh -huh. Honours, it will be included during during the filing or a period for during the filing the of, of filing. the certificates of oh, candidacy. Tama. So, Madam Chair, pa, parang hindi ba kayo na hindi hindi ba kayo parang na insulto na na bali wala lahat yun ano na you made it ano mandatory to divulge your nominees and then you allow the wholesale uh, withdrawal, di ba of the of the uh, names to be substituted by an entirely new list. Hindi, parang, hindi nyo, ba, hindi nyo naramdaman na na-circumvent lang din yung rule po natin. Kaya maganda, maganda your honors and madam chair, kung yeah. mayroon tayong amendments as far as this law is concerned, yeah, ayun na yung... But why list. not? Bakit administratively hindi nyo, mag, hindi nyo magawa? I mean, parang, okay. ano, parang binali, de, uh, ID, parang, parang binali wala yung rule, di ba? Give us five names. We went, tapos after election, Give a, uh, they, will, they will give another five new names. So, paano? <laughs> Wala din kasing absolute prohibition as far as the law is concerned, Your Honors. Yes, which is what we seek to provide. 
Uh, that there should be an absolute prohibition. So there's no suspicion. Senator De La Rosa, please. Yes, Madam Chair, kakasabi lang ng kumilik na walang express prohibition sa batas. Kaya ngayon, let us express that uh, particular prohibition. Ayun ang purpose natin ngayon dito. Thank you, Madam Chair. Thank you. Perhaps we ask at this juncture uh, some of the party list here to uh, respond to uh, some of these new uh, amendments. Uh, any reaction, please, from uh, Sagip Party List, Axi, IS, PDP? Uh, are you a party list? No. Okay. <laughs> okay. Political party and one rider party list. Sige, sino mauna? Uh, hindi ko makita yung nariyan. Ah, PPC. Eh, wala namang party list sa inyo, no? May kabilang PDP laban. Okay. Any uh, reaction from the party list, please, in as much as you are uh, directly involved in this? Sagip, ACTIS, and one rider, please. Minority leader, as uh, stated earlier, there was also a committee report already in the 18th Congress about the party list. Uh, na integrate na, refiled na rin tayo, di ba? Uh, Senator uh, De La Rosa and I. And then the Comelec sat now with us in three or so TWGs, so it's quite thorough, except that I sought to include it in a new omnibus election code. Um, siguro yan, decision na, uh, siguro, Madam Chair, yan, uh, yan siguro. Kung stand alone siya. Yes, kung tatagal, kasi medyo, yeah. uh, if our feeling is much abused na, and then this is uh, really urgent, uh, our, our elections can function through the administrative power of the COMELEC naman eh. So maybe the, if the omnibus election code will take longer to pass compared to, uh, am to amending or improving the party system as, as a standalone measure, itong RA 70, ano ba ito? 7941. So I suggest, paunahin, paunahin yeah. na natin ito kung mas mabilis ang uh, takbo po nito. Uh, just a suggestion. Madam yes, uh, I, I agree. Uh, we've, we've actually parceled out the uh, uh, important portions, such as hybrid elections, then early elections for seniors and so on, as well as this party list. Uh, we filed them also as standalone bills. Kung ano mauna, di sige na. Oo, dahil mga urgent naman yan in view of all what's, all of the things happening. Yes, uh, Attorney Matibag, please. Yeah, we, we prepared a statement of support to the pending bill of the Senate. First of all, good morning, Madam Chair. Good morning. Good morning to other senators. Special mention to my ninong, Senator Coco Pimentel. <laughs> <laughs> Not many knows that he's my ninong in Sakasal. No? We miss you already, Senator. <laughs> sa PDP. So we, we prepared a statement of support and I would like to read it to, so that it will be put on record. So we, the PDP Laman, strongly support the proposed Senate Bill numbers 179 and 1174 filed by Senator Ivy Marcos and Senate Bill number 201 filed by Senator Ronald Bato de la Rosa seeking amendments to the party list system. We firmly believe that these reforms are crucial in promoting equal representation and safeguarding the rights and welfare of the marginalized sector of our society. As a political party committed to the principles of theism, humanism, enlightened nationalism, democratic socialism, and consultative and participatory democracy, the PTP Laban has consist consistently advocated for the empowerment and the upliftment of the marginalized communities in our country. We recognize the importance of providing a platform for their voices to be heard in ensuring the meaningful participation in the democratic process. The party list system was established with the noble objective of ensuring proportional representation of marginalized sectors in the legislative branch of our government. However, over the years, certain challenges and loopholes have emerged which have compromised the integrity and effectiveness of this system. Therefore, the proposed amendments to the party list systems as embodied in the respect respective Senate bills are timely and necessary to address these concerns. The PDP Laban believes that this proposed amendment Amendments will strengthen the party list system, fortify the democratic foundation of our nation, and enhance the representation of marginalized sectors in our legislature. 
By supporting these reforms, we affirm our commitment to advancing the rights and welfare of all Filipinos, particularly those who have historically been marginalized and underrepresented. We are ready and willing to contribute our ex expertise and resources to ensure the success of these crucial reforms. Together, we call to work towards a more inclusive and equi equitable political landscape that upholds the principles of justice and democracy. So this is the statement of support of PDP Laban. And uh, there are some issues that we also tackled within the group, like for purposes of determining the representation of a marginalized sectors, it's very good that we are defining what is marginalized. But I, I, I'm not sure if it's uh, unconstitutional, will be constitutional, if we will make it part of the law that those who will be representing the marginalized sector, as defined by the, the House bill, should be really a member or a part of that marginalized sector. For example, if you are representing the sector of uh, mga guard, mga guardia, dapat actually you should be uh, uh, a security guard or you're representing a peace officer, you're actually a peace officer so that uh, the, the, the intent of the marginal sector will really be represented. Uh, that's all, Madam Chair. Thank you very much. Yes, thank you very much, Attorney Matibag. Anything from uh, the uh, uh, party list representatives, please? Otherwise, we assume that you're in full agreement with everything we said. Yes, Attorney Frivaldo. Good morning, Honorable Chair and Honorable Members of uh, this committee. Uh, one writer uh, would like to extend our support to the bill of the Honorable Chair with some uh, reserva reservations on some topics, Your Honor, please, if I may. Uh, with regard to the, the material representation of the nominees, also I agree with uh, uh, Attorney Matibag that uh, one writer does not support this, um, that they have to belong to the same marginalized and underrepresented sector. We symp sympathize with the same and believe that in the upliftment of the sector's rights as such, um, the track record of the nominees is enough and should be sufficient proof of his qualifications and shows that the individual is well-versed as to the uh, concerns and exposed to the current status and the needs of the sector. Uh, that he, uh, he wishes to represent, as well as knowing reasonable th methods to meet the needs of the sector through proper legislation. Also, one writer uh, fully supports the intention of bringing out more responsive and meaningful representation of the various sectors of the country, specifically the marginalized sector. Uh, Your Honor, uh, we also do not support the proposal of the two classification of the party list where uh, sectorals and the political parties are given the 50-50% uh, um, allocation. We do believe that uh, the possibility of disenfranchising voters by limiting the number of seats based on the classification instead of allowing the voters to have a free reign over the party list representation that they identify the most, whether it be regional, uh, provincial, and sectoral, also, Your Honor, may we also support for the timeline for the registration of the party list for the 90 days. This allows the COMELEC for better uh, time to run through the, the qualifications of all the party list. Also, Your Honor, please, uh, the one writer supports the addition of the grounds finding by final judgment that the director indirectly participated in the acts detrimental to the best interest of the government to overthrow the government. Um, one reservation, however, Your Honor, um, one writer, uh, the phrase, the best interest of the government, as it is not properly defined to guide the COMELEC when applying the grounds, nevertheless, one writer believes the jurisprudence will play a crucial part in determining the proper application of the phrase. Um, last yes, we year, agree we can find better language. Yes, yes Your Honor. Okay. Um, is that it? Um, just one Have more you point? submitted, actually, a position paper. May we ask your honor, please, for uh, just a few more time to submit our position yeah, paper. Sure. To come. Yeah. Okay, Thank you. Um, for, for the last for your bill, ma'am, one uh, writer does not support the inclusion of the grounds material representation of the qualifications of the nominees as that could cause the removal, cancellation of the certificate of registration. This could be treated as an internal matter of the party 
and mere replacement of substitution of the nominee who provided material misrepresentation should be suffi sufficient penalty for the act. Um, may I also give our uh, op uh, comments on the bill filed by Honorable Senator Bato, please. Uh, we support the bill. This empowers COMELEC in screening the party lists that may have unsavory objectives like violent or illegal motives in having the just justification under law to reject their application for registration as a party. The grounds listed would aid in curbing the abuses wrought to the unprivileged, vulnerable, vulnerable and marginalized sector of the society. Uh, in, the, in addition, these actions encourage the party list could cause unrest or dispute in existing government system, a far cry from a fully functioning cooperative uh, governing body. Lastly, however, honor, uh, your honor, uh, one observation one writer has is the phrase best interest of the government, as it is not properly defined to guide the COMELEC when applying the grounds. Nevertheless, one writer believes that the jurisprudence will play a crucial part in determining the proper application of the phrase. For your consideration, your honors. Thank you, Attorney Privaldo. Thank you, Salamat. Senator. Thank you very much. And uh, Senator Bato, any comments? Yeah, we'll await the written, uh, the written brief. Uh, Act uh, CIS, any comments, please? And if there are any additions, feel free to put them in your, uh, in your position paper or further consultations uh, that we will conduct necessarily for the TWG. Yes, Act CIS, please. Uh, good morning, uh, Honorable Senator Spock. Um, from the AXIS party list po. Um, as the top party list garnering the highest number of votes in the recent election, we in the AXIS party list would like to express our support for the reform of, for the reform of the party list system act in pursuit of, the, of, of manifesting the true intent of 1987 constitution and, in, and the party list system act. Bilang kakampi ng mga inaapi, it is our utmost priority to let the voice of the marginalized, most vulnerable, and underrepresented to be heard. In addition, Madam uh, Chair, uh, with your kind indulgence po, may we ask uh, additional time in submitting our comments po, um, and we think some provisions are that are detrimental for the Senate bill as well as for the House bill counterparts. Sure. sure, we'll welcome that, but I can't give you too much time because as stated earlier, this has already gone through the, the uh, mill during the 18th Congress. So uh, we're going directly to the committee report having, uh, all, having, a dra having a previous one already in hand. So, hindi kami magtatagal dyan, kaya yes, wag rin kami magtagal. Okay, sagip party Thank list, Attorney De La Cruz, please. We herewith recognize the uh, arrival of the chairman of the COMELEC, who had notified us earlier of his uh, um, earlier uh, appointments. Okay, sagip, please. Good morning, Madam Chair, and to the honorable members of the committee. Uh, we at Sagip Hi, party list. Commissioner leader. Bula is also here with us, so... Uh, Welcome uh, to Ray and George. Thank you. Yes, Attorney Cruz. Uh, we at Sagip Party List po are one with the endeavor of inter introducing reforms to the uh, party list system. Uh, we, we are also aware of the abuses that, have, that some unscrupulous groups have done uh, because of the loopholes in the system. As, and as was mentioned earlier, uh, we have a bill pending in the House of Representatives by Congressman Marcoleta. Uh, we, because we, we do identify the loopholes uh, with the abuse in the naming of the party list, and that's what we introduced. Um, Madam Chair, with your yes, Thank you very much. If that's the case, yeah, I understand. I ha I'm in receipt of the House bill of uh, uh, Congressman uh, Marcoleta, but if you could uh, already uh, comment as well, not only on the House versions, but also the Senate uh, recommendations, many of which are derived from COMELEC. So 
if you could comment on that as well. Yes, Madam Chair. Uh, with your indulgence, we would like to ask for additional time to submit our comments as well as um, if we do deem it po uh, proper, we will submit a precision paper regarding the proposed measures. Yes, uh, it's just that I can't give you endless time, like yes. I said, because uh, we're uh, pushing through with this and uh, we already have a previous committee report in hand. It's uh, going to look uh, very lazy if we don't move forward quickly. Okay, I had Madam a few Chair. questions. Ma Madam Chair. Opa, Excuse right. me. Yes, Senator Rosa. Madam Chair, uh, I just would like to know if uh, am I correct if uh, uh, am I correct that uh, this uh, invited party list that uh, we have now today they are the top performers during the last uh, elections. Kayo, kayo number one, sir, di ba? Number one, kayo. Number two, ang one rider. Dalawa sa inyo, dalawa. We have two seats, for Your Honor. Ang Ang act, tatlo. Yes, po, tatlo po. Tapos yung uh, sagip, dalawa. dalawa. Ah, okay. So you are the top performers. We actually invited everyone, including the Makabayan block, in recognition of the bill that they filed in the lower house. Okay. Inimbita naman lahat. E, hindi dumating yung uh, Makabayan? Yeah, hindi ata, no? Hindi dumating. Okay. That's okay. to the best of my understanding. <coughs> I ask that everybody be invited. Thank you. Thank you, Madam Thank Chair. You. <coughs> Thank you very much. I'm happy that uh, both the uh, Comelec commissioners are here, including the chairman. May tatanong lang ako kung tama ba yung 50-50. Dahil kasi, dun sa atong paglaom, di ba, dun sa interpretation nila, um, they said that the reservation of one half of the party list to sectoral parties applies only for the first three consecutive terms after the ratification of this constitution. E medyo long ago and far away na yun. That means that the party list system is fully open after the end of the first three congressional terms. What's the interpretation of the COMELEC and the stakeholders um, regarding the Atong Paglaum uh, judgment? Um, are we therefore prohibited from allocating portions of the party list, or does the aforesaid section merely require that the sectoral parties be allocated at least one half for the first three terms and thereafter Congress shall be free to decide on the allocation of said seats. Uh, yes, uh, Chairman, I'm uh, just consulting. We will not uh, tie you to whatever you say here. Good, good morning, uh, Madam Chair, Your Honours. Uh, as far as the committee is concerned, since we are there only to enforce and administer election laws, so no choice po kami kung hindi sumunod sa decision ng Supreme Court in atong paglaong versus COMELEC. Subalit, uh, yun po yung matagal na naming hinihingi na tama po ang kagalanggalang na chairperson. Yun po yung interpretation ng Supreme Court. Simply because Republic Act 7941, yung ating pong batas sa party list, ay so general uh, and napilitan ng Supreme Court in several instances, nagsimula pa po yan doon sa ang bagong bayani versus COMELEC. In several cases, napilitan ng Supreme Court mag-legislate. You call that judicial legislation, pati nga po yung computation eh. Pati po yung computation, napilitan sila simply because they have no choice. Nagkaroon ng unang po panganiban formula. Sumunod naman po yung Carpio formula. Tapos nung una, you, 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 you must not be living in the gated community sa Forbes or Dasmariñas. Yung sumunod naman po, you, you need not be walloping in poverty. Uh, in order to be a nominee, you must have only an advocacy in that uh, particular interest. So, uh, simply because po, indeed, Dapat na po talaga, Your Honors, um, um, Mr. Uh, Madam Chair, na magkaroon ng pagsususog ng pagbabago sa Republic Act 7941. Yung pong binabanggit niyo po, uh, Madam Chair, yung po pagnalagay po natin dyan, that will now be the interpretation of the Supreme Court. Kaya lang naman po sila nag-interpret kasi po wala po sa Republic Act 7941. So everything can be changed because simply lang naman po yung nakalagay sa Section 5 ng Article 6 ng Constitution, 20% must belong to the party list based on the, those who are marginalized and underrepresented. Oh. Yun nga pong marginalized and underrepresented, wala nga pong proper definition po yun eh. Nag-effort nga tayo mag-define yan, pero mahirap-hirap. Uh, so sa tingin ninyo, hindi naman labag sa kautosan ng uh, Korte Suprema, hindi rin labag sa atin sa Aligang Batas, yung mag-allocate ng 50-50 or anumang uh, hatian ng uh, political at sectoral? Madam Chair, hindi po. Simply because uh, the decision of the Supreme Court forms part of the law of the land. Being part of the law of the land, therefore, it can be changed Tama. by a future legislation. 
yes. such as the proposal of the Honorable Chairperson. Opo. So how many party list groups have a seat in the 19th Congress that are also national political parties? May bilang po tayo. How many are regional parties? How many are sectoral? May breakdown po kayo ng iba't ibang uri ng party list? Yes, Madam Chair. Uh, as, as of this time, I learned that this representation will be able to provide the exact figure, but we have 100, presently we have 182 party list organizations and uh, sect whether sector organizations, sectoral party, national and regional. And uh, for purposes of the 20, 2025 election, we will be removing at least 54 party list organizations and uh, political parties because they failed to get 2% in two consecutive elections. So more or less po, meron po tayong 100, matitira po natin, 130 na party list na lamang. Um, Pero uh, right now, how many are represented in Congress? How many party lists? Uh, ano po sila lahat ngayon, Madam Chair? 69, Madam Chair. 69? Yes, Madam Chair. Oh. Because of the Supreme Court decision, ang sabi po, that we have to fill up every all and all uh, slots for the party list. Nung una po sa panganiban formula, Madam Chair, hindi po kinakailangan hindi na, na ipila. Hindi na kinakailangan yung bawat isa. Kaya po dati nung una, naging 35 lang. Ngayon po, finila po natin lahat ng 69. So, yeah. if, is there going to be a constitutional infirmity if you pass a law requiring sectoral parties to represent um, the sectors expressly mentioned in the Constitution yung economically marginalized and underrepresented. Uh, with Pwede all due respect, break down yan? With all due respect, uh, yung Madam mga, Chair. Yung mga fisher folk, farmers, etc. Pwede bang obligahin na may kinatawan yan? Uh, with all due respect, Madam Chair, you are correct. Yun po sa Article 18 ng Constitution, yung transitory provision. Nag-mention na po doon ng mga, ng mga sectoral organizations that, uh, that must be represented in Congress. Sila po yung fisher folks, farmers, uh, women, uh, youth. Yeah, Meron po. Sa, ah, ngayon po. As, wala eh. Yun na nga eh, pero samantalang sa saligang bata siya, naun eh. Wala rin pong veterans uh, sector. Veterans marami, OFW. Meron po OFW. Parang meron. Merong, merong OFW, pero yung fisher folk, wala akong nakikita, di ba? Agriculture sector lang po yung, not specific po for the fisher folk. Yeah, the constitution specific. It does differentiates them from uh, farming. Now, I'm just curious if uh, there will be an infirmity in that case. Um, aside from mandating through legislation that have to be occupied by sectoral groups, are there other measures that would allow more sectoral groups to represent the marginalized and underrepresented? May magagawa pa ba tayo na talagang uh, tatalima dun sa mithiin ng ating saligang batas? Kasi palayo na tayo ng palayo eh. Um, Madam Chair, if only, and Your Honours, if only Congress can properly define and classify marginalized. the marginalized sectors. And then, kung sakali po may magpapa-accredit sa amin, uh, kung sakali po ma-accredit, they will be classified in accordance with their sector. Halimbawa po kung farmer, farmer sector. Sila-sila, bigyan po natin din sila. Halimbawa, kung ilan po yung allocated sa farmers, sa fisher folk, sa women, sa youth. Pagkatapos po, kung tal sampu po sila, sila po yung maglalaban-laban doon sa mismong sampung slots na yon. So that at any given time, there will be a representation of each and every sector as mandated by the Constitution. Okay. Um... Both bills of Senator De La Rosa and myself propose that the nominees of the sectoral parties must be members of the underrepresented or marginalized sector. Would there be a constitutional impediment with regard to this proposed amendment that is being violently objected to by one rider and all the other party lists here? Uh, Madam Chair, as far as the comic is concerned, there is no constitutional infirmity or there will be no provision of the Constitution that will be violated. Yes, there's no impediment uh, as we understand it. But uh, in addition to banning them entirely, unless they're really members, bona fide members, what measures can COMELEC and uh, the uh, legislature together institute to ensure that the nominees really do belong in some manner to the said parties? Uh, as far as the qualification... Kung tutuusin natin, miski yung electric co-op, eh, mahigpit dyan eh. 
di ba? At least attended last two meetings and, uh, active, and actively participated. Eh, ito, mas mahalaga kasi magiging kinatawad sa Kongreso ni walang, uh, walang uh, kinalaman doon sa party list o advocacy. Uh, Madam Chair, Your Honors, ang pwede po natin gawin sa magiging, sa bill po, maglalagay tayo ng qualification of being nominees, dadagdagan po natin. Yung qualification, hindi naman po siya violation because that's not qualification of members of the House of Representatives, but qualification of nominees of that particular sector or party. Pero doon umaalma, bago kayo dumating, inoobjectan na ng ating mga party list, hindi daw kailangan membro ng marginalized sector Yun po kasi para sabi. maging kinatawan. Uh, Madam Chair, uh, yun po kasi ang sabi ng Korte Suprema doon po sa atong paglaong versus Comelec. Uh, but then, yun po yung interpretation ng Supreme Court in view of the absence of a provision of, uh, in the law. But if the law will say that the following should, can only be the nominees of a particular party or sector or organization, then I, I do believe that even the Supreme Court will interpret the provision based on the, the content of the, uh, the, of the law itself. Yes, thank you. Uh, yes, my Mr. Chairman, leader. yes, Mr. Chairman. Has there been a case decided by the Supreme Court which uh, touched on or interpreted Section 9 of RA 7941? Kasi Section 9 yun yung title niya, Qualifications of Party List Nominees. So kung meron, meron na bang case tungkol po dyan, yan ang specific niyang... Uh, Hindi po uh, uh, specifically patungkol yeah, sa Section 9, kung okay. hindi okay. patungkol lang po sa issue ng, na, na, ng issue lang po doon sa whether or not somebody who is not a part, a, a member of the sector mm -hmm. uh, can be a nominee of the party list. Yun lang po part na yon. Ang sabi po ng Korte Suprema ay pwede basta mayroong proven advocacy. Yun po, yun po medyo mabigat po, yung proven advocacy po. Yun po yung medyo... because because of the current state of the law then being uh, being considered by the Supreme Court that's right so we yes, if we yes we can uh, itong section 9 yeah we can we can elaborate or uh, add uh, more qualifications wala yata ang constitutional ano, uh, requirement uh, mr chairman you said 69 party lists are represented in congress 69 are you sure about that or 69 seats or or the Nine seats, seats oh, but yes, yes seats. how many party lists iba po yun eh uh, how many parties so 69 seats pa lang ngayon ah yes. marami rami pa lang yun ah 20 63 sorry your, your honor 63 party list 69 seats 63 party list 69 seats okay. 63 party lists, organizations, or political parties, Madam Chair, and 69 seats. Okay. Ito pong, uh, Madam Chair, ito pong limit na uh, three seats maximum is not in the Constitution. Wala rin po wala rin yan, sa okay. Constitution, wala rin po okay. sa Republic Act 7941. Yung threshold na 2%, Nasa law lang yan, law. Nasa 7941, so, Madam Chair. Even that, we can, even that, we can adjust. Yes, yes Madam yes. Chair. Okay. So long as there will be a 20% tomb uh, percentage of the members of the House of Representatives. Siguro, Madam Chair, I, I suggest we, ano to, we approach this with a blank uh, state. Yes, uh, okay. Uh, ang, feeling, yes. ang feeling natin, we can restart or reset the party list system uh, by amending, overhauling 7941. Ganon siguro nga yung pag-approach po natin. Let us be bold and brave here uh, yes. that we can do it. Yes. Na. Kasi ang, sometimes ang attitude kasi namin na uh, we are constricted by the Constitution and the Supreme Court decisions. Pero tama po, as pointed out by Senator, the Chairman yes. and Senator Tolentino, Tolentino earlier, they were interpreting uh, given the body of laws uh, Di ba? Uh, present during the time they were deliberating. So, kung magbago yung isa, the landmark law governing the entire system, magbabago din ang interpretation in case there is a future case brought before the Supreme Court. Tama po kayo, uh, Madam Tama Chair, Your Honors. Nung una po, madami po nakakuha ng tat tatlong seats. Nung una po. Uh, pagkatapos po, biglang bumaliktad po at nagbaliktad lang ang Supreme Court sa kanilang decision. Sabi po, isa na lang dapat ang may two seats. At pati po yung pag, uh, pag three seats at pagkatapos po, 
uh, pagkatapos po yung pag, pagbigay ng guaranteed seat at saka po yung, uh, yung pong additional seats. Yes, uh, Commissioner Bulay, please. Thank you, ma'am. Uh, thank you very much, sir. Uh, but uh, we all agree that the spirit of the law is very clear what the Constitution wants. I think uh, we should be guided by that. And our, our dilemma, madam, is this. Uh, when you question nominees in the COMELEC, when a party questions a nominee in the COMELEC, and the, no, that, that, that seat has already been occupied before, there's this practice of substitution Actually, that so was my I, next question. <laughs> Mom, I, I think that law that we're trying to craft should include also that. Earlier, Thank I mentioned that in my version, I specifically advised that we should ban substitution for nominees altogether, except in the case of death, physical incapacity, or uh, uh, so on. No? So, yeah, because parang nakapagod na yung substitution in toto. That's happened more than once. Ano? Sangayon po ako sa inyo. At uh, yung anti-political dynasty, any thoughts on uh, the Makabayan uh, provision regarding anti-dynasty uh, and the banning of uh, relatives na nga, of mayors and so on, battalion commanders, uh, chief of police and so on. Uh, Any so, thoughts regarding the anti-political dynasty provision? We only have one, as we know well, and that's in the SK Charter. And uh, it's proven very difficult as a result to complete SK councils. Kasi magkakamag-anak talaga sa barangay. Ngayon, ito, yung anti-political dynasty was uh, recommended by uh, several research groups, including the PCIJ. Any thoughts, Po? We will not uh, tie you to anything you say today. Uh, it's simply brainstorming on the best interest of the party list. Total naman po, Madam Chair, nasa Constitution yung anti-political dynasty provision as to how we define political dynasty. Yan naman po yung problema ever since ng ating Kongreso kung hanggang anong degree kung uh, sino, katibap, ka, ka, kasama ba yung mga mag-illegitimate uh, ang relationship. So yun lang po yung magiging problem. Sa part po ng komisyon, uh, if there will be an anti-political dynasty, we will definitely implement to the fullest that, that uh, provision. And Paano we will disqualify. Paano yung recommendation na yung mga, yung mga mayor and so on? Elective and appointive eh, yung nasa makabayan version. Yung elective nasa mayor, governor, etc. Tapos yung appointive yung mga director, bureau, chief level up, and including AFP, PNP. Any thoughts on prohibiting their inclusion in a party list, nominees list? Ang problem po natin, Madam Chair, is when will the prohibition or the disqualification... Five years now. Five years previous to the election. Ang problem po natin, Madam Chair, doon sa substitution po kasi. So, ibig sabihin po, kapag ka nag-substitute in case of death, disqualification, or... Uh, hindi na pwede mag-substitute simply because related po doon sa isang incumbent na mayor, incumbent na congressman. So, kung ipagbabawal naman po natin, uh, kung sasabihin po natin para lamang doon sa originally na magpapananom, hindi din that's a violation of the Equal Protection Clause of the Constitution. Ayun na nga, at lagi mm -hmm. namang ginagawa yan sa mga elective na regular candidates. Parati yung byuda, di ba, nung nabaril. Parang naging customary sa Pilipino yan eh. Uh, hindi ko nga maintindihan. Are we going to be unduly strict in this case on the party list nominees? Hindi naman yata sapat. Hindi naman tama yun. With all due respect, uh, Madam Chair, tama po. Uh, in, the, in the final analysis po, nominees pa lang naman din po yan eh. At they will become member of the House of Representatives. Kung sa House nga po, regular districts, wala po tayong, tayong anti-political dynasty. So bakit naman po magkakaroon sa anti-political dynasty provision kung sa party list po siya papasok? Kanina sabi ninyo, utos ng Constitution, gumawa ng batas tungkol doon. Eh baka dapat din sa Congress. Ganun ba yung sinasabi mo? Madam Chair, Madam Chair uh, iba, yata, iba kasi yata ang justification sa... Sa party list, eh. we, we have uh, rationalized and justification natin for the marginalized and the, uh, and the um, let's say, lagyan na natin voiceless. Uh, yun na. So, dapat wala ka ng kamag-anak na close sa uh, Congress kasi hindi ka na nga voiceless kung kamag-anak mo na close yun. Eh. 
di ba? So, it must, so the sector, it is the sector which must be, uh, there's a sector's interest and voice which must be brought, brought into Congress and it must be in the person of someone who belongs to that sector. Sana gano, kung yun siguro ang pinakamagandang uh, fulfillment of the essence of the party list system. If we ca if we can constitutionally do it, uh, I think we should we should do it, uh, Madam Chair. Yes, I believe so. I uh, I'm in full agreement with the minority leader. Um, I will have to. If there are no further questions about the party list system, should we uh, are we ready to proceed to a uh, to a TWG? Given that uh, we had rather copious discussions on the omnibus election code and its standalone version. Yes, uh, Commissioner Bulay, please. One last thing. Pupuslit lang kasi ako dun sa defense. Yes, And then I'll come back. I, I'm very happy because uh, uh, the, the jurisdiction, sir, has always been a problem. Once a candidate is proclaimed and jurisdiction is with the Senate or with Congress already. Now, questions arise while these people are sitting there and questioned by other people from the outside, not from Congress. So does that automatically bring the jurisdiction to the COMELEC, say there are questions on nominees? Or jurisdiction is retained by Congress or whatever body that, that's questioned. That is not clear, sir. So some decisions we say uh, we don't have jurisdiction. Uh, we have jurisdictions as for candidates but we don't have jurisdiction on nominees. We do have Tama. them at the time of application, but it but is far, long after. ago and far away, ma'am. Lalo when na they yung say, mga na. Yes, ma'am. So I think that should also oh, be in the house, uh, in the law. Madam Chair, ang section 9 kasi ang qualifications for party list nominees, two paragraphs lang siya. Yung second paragraph pa para sa youth pa. Very specific sa youth. So... We, I think we can we can cure this by providing the details, uh, Madam Chair. Details lang. Yes, we have well to taken. Yes. There were two cases, Madam Chair. Right with made. lacuna ledges, ika nga. Opo. The one cases po, the case of uh, Palparan versus HRET, and the case of Abayan versus HRET, ang question po, who is the candidate for purposes of the party list election? And it was answered by the Supreme Court saying that the organizations or the, part, the political parties are the candidates. But who are now the members of Congress? The members of Congress are the nominees themselves. Simply because, and therefore, since a nominee and a member, therefore, the jurisdiction now belongs to the House of Representatives Electoral Tribunal in accordance with Article 6, Section 17 of the Constitution. So, maliwanag po yun that, uh, again, the, the members of the House of Representatives are the nominees themselves. Kaya po na itanong, Madam Chair, yung issue na yon sa Supreme Court ay dahil kung, sino, kung ang miyembro ay ang nominee o ang miyembro ay ang party list, to whom do you apply the three consecutive term? That's right. <laughs> Magulo yan. Okay. So, um, I think these are all the questions that we have to address. And I will therefore call uh, TWG that I hope you will participate in, uh, particularly the party list. You are only three here, and there are clearly 63. So 60 have been, are absent now. And uh, everyone, as usual, is volunteering poor attorney Elnath. Okay, so thank you very much. I'm going to have to suspend this with, uh, uh, with uh, apologies to both Senator uh, uh, Pimentel as well as Senator Padilla. Takbo lang ako ng five minutes dyan sa SRDP sa Defensa.
banggit yun, hindi ba? And then we can limit substitution only in the case of death or withdrawal or physical capacity, pwede ba yun? And uh, anti-political dynasty. Siyempre, gusto namin kayo yung bad guy. Bahala na yung po. Bahala na yung komele. Kayo na yung kontrabid. Lalo na yung mga re-electionist. Ayaw namin maging bad guy. Ano? Ayun. Dapat kayo na lang yung mga bad. Lagi lang yung komele kang kontrabid. Siyempre. Madam Che. Yes. Uh, uh, with your yes, time sure, permission, baka po pwede masama sa TWG yung interpretation, yung clarification din sa two consecutive elections. Failure to get 2%. Ano po ba yun? Ang ibig sabihin po ba nun ay 1% yung unang election, 1% yung unang, that's 2%. So pwede pong tumakbo. Or dapat po eh, talagang complete failure to get 2% in the two elections. Hindi pa po, hanggang ngayon po walang decision ng Supreme Court tungkol sa bagay na So therefore, a party list can always invoke to the commission later and say, uh, 1.25 kami nung una. 1.25 kami, that's 2.5. And therefore, we should be allowed to participate in the next election. <clears throat> So hanggang ngayon po wala po yun and maybe hopefully po in the TWG that can be clarified uh, with more specificity. Thank you very much po. That's not clear. Yes, that's not clear and I've heard that argument made before. Oh, oh, na one plus one equals two nga naman. Opo. Okay, so we're endlessly clever with this sort of thing. Sige. At uh, I think we have a last, uh, uh, last item on the agenda. I apologize for all running around because there's so many uh, there's so many hearings this morning. Nagahabol bago pumasok in budget. And this is to do with the nuisance candidates. Uh, as I recall, this is a refiled bill, again, from the 18th Congress, filed by Senator Wynne Gachalian, uh, making the act of, the, uh, nuisance, of being a nuisance candidate an election offense, also adding the following ground for the cancellation, and that is to obtain money, profit, or any other consideration. Ano? So, meron uh, rin bagong penalty, and... Uh, that was uh, a fine of 50,000 to the Comelec. So um, these were the um, these were the salient points of the bill. In addition, I uh, recall that uh, during the 17 um, April public hearing here, um, Chairman uh, Garcia asked for the help of the senators to break the trend. And finally, criminalize nuisance candidates. The Senate committee was conducting its inquiry on the murder of the late Negros Oriental uh, Governor Roel de Gamo, who was declared a winner in 2022 after being awarded additional votes originally obtained by a nuisance candidate bearing a similar name as himself, but who could no longer be found thereafter. So uh, I think the transcript indicates that uh, Chairman Garcia said we should criminalize nuisance candidates. Ayun. So uh, any thoughts? Uh, have we changed our mind or talagang uh, uh, maayos to? And uh, either imprisonment or fine, mas malupit po kayo, at 500,000 pesos at my perpetual disqualification pa from office. So mas matindi yung parusa ng COMELEC. Opa. Uh, Madam Chairperson, as far as the COMELEC, kami po is concerned, uh, parehas pa rin po yung position natin uh, that we should criminalize and perpetually disqualify those who will be found by the Commission as uh, a nuisance candidate under Section 69 of the Omnibus Election Code. Ang kadahilan ng po, Madam Chair, sapagkat kung i-disqualify natin as a nuisance kayong election na to, wala po makakapigil sa kanilang tumakbo na naman sa susunod. Either para manghingi ng bayad doon sa kaparehas na pangalan o talagang lituhin lang yung mga, mga botante po natin. So talaga po meron, meron talaga nagpapabayad uh, because of the similarity of their names. Uh, so yan lang po makakapigil sa kanila yung perpetual disqualification and uh, criminalization of uh, the act of filing as a nuisance candidate. Ngayon po, uh, Madam Chair, would like to respectfully announce for the record that as far as the community is concerned, while waiting for the law, it is also our obligation to decide all cases of nuisance uh, no nuisance cases before the printing of the ballot. So we are committing before the committee, especially if there is no law yet by 2024, kapag po nag-file sila ng candidacy by October, halimbawa, 
before po mag-print ng balota by January or February, as the case may be, for the 2025 elections, we will decide up to the end bank level all nuisance cases para po hindi na masama yung pangalan sa mismong balota po. Kasi po nasa site lagi nila yung kaso ng Santos versus the Comelec na kung saan nakalagay po sa Santos versus Comelec na kung hindi na yung boto, kung madidisqualify namin later, will be credited as valid votes para doon sa legitimate candidate in which case na proclaim na and uh, iaanal pa namin yung proclamation and then iaad namin yung boto and it will take some time. So we will resolve all cases para po sa kaalaman din ng lahat ng kakandidato para hindi na sila magpatakbo of nisons before the printing of all the ballots by 2025. Yes, that's good news. Yes, uh, thank you very much. And uh, yes, uh, I think uh, there you had an interview tungkol sa Marquez versus Comelec na eto nga na sinabi ng ating Korte Suprema that unpopularity and non-membership in a political party are not sufficient grounds to declare one a nu nuisance candidate. Um, so, sa kabila ng pagiging malaking tulong yung Supreme Court, eh talagang uh, na ipapakita na kailangan ng palta ng batas o at, at liwanagin kung ano talaga yung nuisance candidate. Sa palagay ninyo, ano yung uh, possible language? Any uh, any ideas how uh, we could redefine nuisance so that it's more effective and uh, up to date? I'm sure, uh, with all due respect, uh, yung pong present section 69, maganda naman po yung wordings non. Ang problem lang po natin pag na-analyze po natin, mukhang applicable sa, auto, sa manual election. Hindi pa po nakapasok yung automated since 1985 pa nga po yung... Opo. So siguro po kung ibabaguhin po natin yung section 69, i-include lang po natin yung pong uh, tungkol sa automated uh, feature ng ating election. Kasi po sa, sa section 69 po, papasok pa po yung tinatawag, Madam Chair, na equity of the incumbent rule. Kung parehas po Marcos ang kandidato, Madam Chair Halimbawa, pero ang isa incumbent na barangay chairman, that will be a, a credited in favor of the incumbent candidate sa manual election po, kahit na nuisan sa limbawa yung isa. Pero po sa, sa automated po, kung sino yung na-shade, yun po kasi yung boto na mabibigay sa kanya. Yes, that's right. Uh, that, uh, um, at the same time, ang sabi ng Marquez that uh, the COMLEC should not uh, pass any measures that would uh, become arbitrary and, op and oppressive and contravene the Republican system of the Constitution. So uh, how would we prevent this chilling effect from uh, occurring if the intent is to criminalize nuisance candidacies? Uh, maybe, Your Honor. The Once again, we're trying to balance, yes. diba? Uh, on one hand, you're trying to weed out the nuisance candidates, particularly those habitual candidates, as well as those who are for profit. No? On the other hand, you really want to encourage greater participation in the electoral process by all sectors, diba? Right? So what is the middle ground? Madam Chair, maybe the law should uh, restrict, if not completely limit, the exercise of discretion of the Commission because the COMELEC was given a, that wide latitude of discretion as far as the present law is concerned. We, one, we can say that simply because you don't have a political party, we can disqualify you. Or one, we can say simply because you have no political history, we can disqualify you. But definitely we will not disqualify you. It's a combination of everything, uh, Madam Chair. So if you do not have any uh, property or uh, world whatsoever that we cannot disqualify you because that is a violation of the Constitution. So therefore, Your Honor, uh, Madam Chair, yung po section 69 is so wide in latitude. Yun that, nga eh. Pero it's not just the law that's wide eh, di ba? Pati yung Corte Suprema, di ba? Acts which clearly demonstrate that the candidate has no bona fide intention to run. Paano kaya yun? Uh, can we make a laundry list of said acts? What acts would demonstrate that the candidate has no intention to run? 
Hindi na nga kampanya. Hmm. Ako, Madam Chair, mayroon pong nag-aarkila pa ng mga bande. Kasi ina Kaya nga. Ina-arkila eh. po nung mismo nagpatakbo sa kanya ng bande. Nung mga pinagpiprinting po ng... Mas marami gasto sa iba eh, kesa sa tunay. Kaya nga eh, such as it should put the election process in mockery. It's not so clear cut eh, hindi po ba? Doon po sa kaso ng Digamo, Madam Chair, isang ruel at isang ruel. At ruel. Opo. At tapos po yung nilagay na tarpulin, yung pangalan po nung Nissans, pero yung, pang yung tarpulin po, mukha po nung tunay na kandidato. Yung tunay na kandidato. Opo. Tapos yung ruel, hindi na mahanap matapos yung eleksyon. Naku, talaga napakalabo. E pa, paano kaya to How do we demonstrate the uh, lack of any intention to run? Maybe there should be a list of acts and then the usual catch-all provision at the end and all similar, ganun, ganun, yung gawain natin. Okay, Commissioner Bulay, please. I'm just uh, thinking aloud that we're in that portion now. I think it's also high time that Senate, look into the qualifications in the Constitution. Uh, maybe it's a far cry, but uh, mas mahirap pa po yung application ng Secretary kaysa sa Presidente na qualifications in the Constitution. Yes. So you're trying to put in a law that will supplement it. Siguro po, Doon sa nuisance candidate, meron na rin law sa qualification mm -mm. for candidates. Kasi Tama. it's very general po eh. Oo eh kaya ho nakakalusot yung... Eh lalo sa nuisance candidates, di ba? What about those who habitually file but are clearly of not sound mind when they file their COCs? They're declared as nuisance candidates you know, on the grounds that they made a mockery of the electoral process. But at the same time, is it proper to declare them criminal given that they are uh, of not sound mind? Paano ba yun? Kawawa naman, di ba? Madam Chair, kahit naman... Oh, may sira naman talaga. Kahit naman po yung material misrepresentation under Section 78 of the Omnibus Election Code is criminal because that's lying. And therefore, Section 16 is likewise lying. And therefore, therefore that's why... That, that's right po, Madam Chair. And we maybe po tama po yung inyo pong suggestion. We should, in, can, we can enumerate the acts. Uh, and, can then we just, and then we the, just put the catch all, all, the usual thing. Yes, so what acts, for example? Sabi nga ninyo, mm -hmm. nag-aalkila pa nga ng, bo, ng banda. Such as if the, uh, yun po, kung halimbawa walang, uh, walang political party, okay. wala siyang capacity to wage a national campaign, if that is the case, in which case uh, we, will, we will also look into the political history At of the person. At saka yung income niya, no? Opo, yung income eh, pero niya. Pero kung income, ayun, magkakaproblema na naman tayo sa Republican form of government. Ang isang ano problem ba? po namin, uh, Madam Chair, meron po nagpa-file, halimbawa po, 25 years of age as president. The duty of the comic is ministerial in character. Maybe we can also change that. The, the, the acceptance by comic, especially if from the face of the COC, the talaga naman pong hindi siya qualified. Halimbawa po, nakita namin 25, uh, o kaya sabi niya siya po ay anak ni ganito, o dahil daw po siya ay girlfriend ni ganito. Uh, Nagpapile po. May mga naniniwala po sa bituin yun ang kanyang plataforma at saka sa mga, sa, sa mga duwende. Oo oh, nga, pero yung 93 years old, di ba, si Prime Minister Mahathir ng Malaysia? Malaban pa, 93 years old. Pa, paano mo di-disqualify yung 85? Ang nagkaproblema po kami, Madam Chair, ay uh, there was one case involving a candidate for Vice President, mm. which uh, the COMELEC uh, disqualified. But uh, unfortunately, the Supreme Court issued a status quo anti-order. But oh. at that time, the ballots were already printed. Oh. And uh, so wala, the, yun, wala na yung pangalan. Wala na po, hindi po naisama. So the COMELEC was castigated by the Supreme Court. Uh -huh. But simply because, how can we do that when we were already printing? Yan po rin yung kakaiba sa automated election. And that's why the solution really, Madam Chair, is maybe if we can maintain Section 69, there is no problem. But we will just commit to uh, uh, decide all nuisance cases before the printing of the ballot. So yun na lang po siguro yung isang solusyon if we cannot find a win-win, if we will try to maintain the status quo as far as Section 69 is concerned. Kami po sa COMELEC, 
again, all nuisance cases will be resolved up to the end bank level, not only division, up to the end bank level. I, I recall that these are the enumerations of acts indicating uh, no real intention to file, and then the qualifications that we wanted to uh, add. Uh, I think this is the reason we ne never came to a committee report, actually, in the 18th Congress. Siguro dapat balikan na natin to at uh, i-focus na uh, yung aspects of how to... Uh, also prove, for example, those who have been animated by evil motives and for the purpose of obtaining money. Magkakaroon naman problema dyan kasi uh, papano ipoprove na naman yan? Yung problema na naman, di ba? Laging problema yan, di ba? Uh, how, how exactly are we going to prove all of this? And then the uh, Comelec will get stuck with the case forever and ever. Um, for the purpose of obtaining money uh, for reason of the similarity in names, di ba? Parati naman ganun eh. Obviously driven by sinister motive. Parati naman ang paulit-ulit. Paano kaya yan? Ano ba maganda dyan? Kasi, paano yan mapuprove? Maganda po siguro yung pong criminalization talaga and perpetual disqual and conspiracy in the act of filing the nuisance candidacy para po matakot din yung mismong perpetrator na nasa likod, yung principal talaga na nasa likod. If it can be proven, uh, then damay po siya doon sa, sa criminalization at the same time sa perpetual uh, disqualification to hold public office. So conspiracy? Yes, Madam Chair. Conspiracy to field? Uh, like a nuisance candidate. So yung mga financier at saka yung opposition, Eh, sasama na, eh, isasama na doon. Yeah? Yes, to feel sure. nuisance candidates, okay? Ha, tutulong kayo rito, ha? Mukhang madugo pala to. Kala ko simple lang, eh. So, it would be advisable, therefore, to prescribe penalties. Your penalties are much heavier than Senator Wynn. You're saying half a million as opposed to 50,000, which I think is correct, and permanent disqualification, and uh, as well, a criminal penalty. That's correct. Tama ba? Depende po siguro dapat, Madam Chair, sa Siyempre position. Siyempre may kwan, oo. Sa position po, kasi po paano po kung tatakbo ang presidente. Oo nga. Tapos presidente, tapos 50,000 po, tapos ganun din po yung, yung fine na 50,000 sa kakandidato sa uh, chairman ng barangay para po merong uh, inequality po doon. O, tsaka kawawa naman yung naniniwala sa duwende at uh, nagdadasal sa buwan. Kaya parang hayaan na natin sila, no? <laughs> Oh, <laughs> eh, pero masasama po kasi yung pangalan sa balota and pagka po automated, hahaba po yung pangalan. Ang laki-laki na ng balota. Yung 65 po, po nung nakaraan, alibaba po 70 yung candidates for president, ganun po kahaba yung ipiprint natin na pangalan. Yeah, the concern is that uh, yun nga, yung evidentiary requirement, direct evidence to obtain money and profit and other consideration. Hirap nun na. So, um, the grounds so far declared, appear to require intent, and we never like going into that whole quagmire, so I don't know what uh, the mere uh, acceptance of money will not necessarily mean that he's um, motivated by profit, diba? Would it therefore be advisable to make use of disputable presumptions, uh, which will arise once certain facts are uh, pro proven, what possible acts to prove that he actually received money. I mean, what what will give rise to disputable presumptions para maging enforceable naman to? Kasi apakahirap niyan. Maganda Lala po, ng direct evidence yan. Madam Chair, yung disputable presumption. O, disputable presumption yes. na lang para at least kahit paano ma, ma, masisimulan yes. niyan. What sort of acts would uh, therefore be included? If it can Ayan. be proven, for example, uh, that that person received a no, received, uh, uh, deposit from yeah. Gcash, Paymaya, or such other instruments. Pero kung cash, okay lang. Basta po may mag-testify uh, na nakatanggap siya. Oh, kung he received money, no? Yes, if po. it's proven. But merely receiving money may not make him a nuisance candidate. Maybe an outright donation. For all we know, it's legitimate. Pwede ba yun? But if the purpose really is to, to uh, the purpose is either to to proceed with Di the filing of the... Di ba may ganun naman yung uh, the whole, the whole uh, 
Yeah, the the whole circumstance, right? Uh, in totality, a, totality. Yeah, the totality. He's never run before. He has no political party. Uh, yeah, all this prima facie. Pwede ba yun? Hindi, otherwise, hindi tayo uusad niyan eh. Ang hirap-hirap ko yan yan. So, anong isusulat natin dyan? Hindi naman tumakbo dati. Ganun. Presumption na lang po. Prima facie is presumption. Para, para we can, ayan, yung mga piskal ang expert dyan. Ayan. Yeah. Um, with three, can we also make use with regard to the grounds to declare a person a nuisance candidate? Can we also make use of prima facie evidence, disputable presumptions, so that we can more easily uh, decide? Kaya naman, di ba? You you can make a case on that uh, basis, and then. Um, in the prosecution for the act of a nuisance candidate, is it prudent to require a previous separate administrative proceeding by the COMELEC, uh, as in the petition to declare a person a nuisance candidate or in a petition for the cancellation of the COC, or puede bang sabay-sabay? Better to allow the criminal prosecution to proceed despite the pendency of the admin proceedings. Makahiwalay naman sila eh. Pwede bang sabay-sabay yun or mas maayos na hiwalay na lang sila? Uh, mas maayos po, uh, Madam Chair, na magkaroon muna ng proceedings dun sa disqualification. Pero antaya na naman yan. Ang problem po, Madam Chair, kapag po uh, nagsabay ng criminal, magpapail din po yung lawyer nung, nung kabila, nung mismo nuisans na baka pinurubahid pa nung nagpatakbo, ng suspension of proceedings in view of the disqualification case. In view of the pendency yes, of Chair. the disqualification. Unlike po sa nuisans po, Usually, nilalagay na po namin, kahit po doon sa cancellation of candidacy, Tama. that the law department is directed to to uh, find any culpability as far as the election, violation of election law is concerned for purposes of filing information. Nilalagay na po namin yun sa... So dapat, uh, so dapat magkahiwalay talaga? Yes. Independent madam. and separate proceeding yung admin versus criminal. Yes, madam. Yeah, otherwise, uh, you're going... They're, they're just gonna... Um, nullify each other. Eh. Gagamitin yung isa para sa isa, di ba? Yes, okay. So, at least we have guidance from you. And then I understand you're going to volunteer Attorney Elnas once again to the TWG. Ayan. Wala ka nang gagawin kundi mag tital TWG habang buhay. Okay. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, wait, the political parties, do you have any comments regarding the nuisance candidates? We don't want it to be unduly strict such that we box out qualified but uh, new and um, inexperienced or unaligned candidates. But at the same time, uh, you need to weed out these people who are making the ballots uh, um, um, cumbersome and uh, really unnecessary, burdening the populace and the Comelec with all sorts of rubbish. Yes, Attorney Matibag, if you had any comments. Yeah, I'm just thinking based on the conversation, the exchange between Chairman uh, Garcia and, and uh, Madam Chair uh, regarding to the list of presidential and probably include Vice President and Senatorial candidates to to lessen the numbers of uh, candidates. Do uh, you think it's possible that as an immediate uh, red flag to disqualify a candidate as a nuisance if he is not nominated by a potent political party? Considering that if it's an individual, yung ngayon nagdadasal sa bituin, nagdadasal sa ganyan, alam, alam naman natin talagang there's no chance of winning or anything. Of course, we are constrained by the fact that they will be denied of their constitutional right. But as a uh, uh, in every constitutional right, there's a corresponding obligation. And I think the COMELEC is obligated to at least protect the electoral process to make it more credible and to more, more, more make it practical. Baka pwede, Madam, Madam Chair, uh, Mr. Chair, na, if, they are if they are not nominated by a potent political party, dapat automatic na na siguro. Teka muna, ano na to? Hindi na natin siguro to isama sa printing para Mabawas, including the senators. I'm okay, less proven na pwedeng, ma'am, unless proven na independent. Halimbawa, let's say, names, big names, like, let's yeah, say... Yan problema, di ba, Grace po, mag-independent. Yeah, okay lang po yun, ma'am, kasi she, she's a senator. Naman ang eh. They're big names, but those names na bigla na lang sumulput na nagpapile na presidente, lalo na same family name pa, those who are candidates, who's really have a very big chance of winning. Baka pwede pong ganun. That, that's I'm just thinking of that idea. Ma baka po ma-violate, Madam Chair, yung constitutional right to freedom of association. So we have the right to be a member of the party. We have the right not to be a member 
of a party. Yes, so even being right. an independent candidate, pagka independent, hindi natin pwede i-disqualify. Talagang case-to-case -case basis at the same time, problema, totality eh, po. Um, it's been uh, commented upon repeatedly that uh, fail, that uh, yun nga, and the uh, Marquez case, eh, kahit hindi ka member ng political party or you're even unpopular, uh, they're not grounds for uh, disallowing you from running eh, or con considering you a nuisance candidate. Eh. It's a little bit tricky. And I think we've had in the past repeated uh, occurrences of, uh, for example, high-profile media personalities not belonging to any political party, mananalo pa. O paano ka niyan? Madam Chair, talaga po ang uh, obligation belongs to COMELEC. It is our duty to... Kayo na sumulat nito, nakakapagod. To decide po the cases of reasons before the printing. Napaka-importante po yun. Kaya nagkakaproblema po talaga. Kaya lang, past, wala nga ang patakaran. Wala talaga ang patakaran. Patakaran. Eh. Patakaran. Patakaran. patakaran susundan eh. Opo. That's why. There's so many issues nga that arise with these nuisance candidates. But like you said, the trouble they cause is uh, really uh, overwhelming. Um, yes, Commissioner Bulay, may dadagdag kayo. Opo, ma'am. Sabihin ko sana, supplitorily, criminal procedure pwedeng gamitin. The, the, the things that are being raised are actually questions of fact yes. that will require uh, evidence. Uh, it's a whole new ensalada which uh, we have, as lawyers, we have rules for those things. So, supplitorily, we can apply that para po maano. It's important that it never happens again. Ano karami ba ang nuisance? Marami po. Ang dami kasi. Marami po. Mabuti kung 10%, uh, wala eh, lampas eh. Lagpas po. Lagpas po. Tsaka po, dagdag po yun eh, sa aming dakit. Ah, malaking, malaking, malaking dagdag eh. Kasi sa, sa dakit po namin, ma'am. Dati-dati may 10% lang. Eh, okay. ngayon, lumulobo na, di ba? Okay. Nauso eh. Ma Lalo na po sa ano, ma'am. Sa, sorry. Sa automated. Oo. Paano mo sasabihin, Nusan, so nakasulat yung pangalan? Tama. Kahit na magkapilido pa. No matter what, ano, nandun. And they normally use that as a defense. That's right. Oo. <laughs> okay. Kayo, yeah, they're using that pa nga against uh, you. Defense. That's right. Attorney Elnas wanted to add something? Uh, yes, yes, Madam Chair, for the record, uh, last 2022 national and local elections uh, for president, 21 po ang na-declare as nuisance. For vice president, 15. How many ran in the end? Um, 10? 10. 10 legit. So, mas marami pa yung nuisance. Yes. Then for senators, 102 were declared nuisance candidates. And then yung, yung included in the ballot? 180. Yeah, parang one, uh, one, uh, 180? 118? Yes. 118 or 180? 180 something. Oh. Sa madaling sabi, marami. Hindi siya pa unti-unti talagang sobrang dagdag trabaho, no? Yeah, dapat hindi na talaga nakakapag-file ulit kasi yun nga, namatay na lang si Rakuyal, eh. Uh, tsaka, ma Madam Chair, Ahaba yung balota namin. Ayun na nga. Once ahaba yung balota namin, dagdag ng expenses yan on the part sa COMELEC. At litong-lito na pati ang botante. Parang nakakagulo talaga sa lahat eh. Okay, lalo na yung mga pangalan na pare-pareho, pati yung party list na pare-pareho halos. Naku, magulo talaga. Okay, so ang dami palang issues nito, nitong nuisance candidate. Akala ko it would be fairly straightforward and the party list was more difficult. But in fact, as they say, and as we've learned in the past, there's no such thing as a simple bill. So let's uh, focus our attentions on this. We'll need your help, naturally, uh, in the COMELEC because you know how it actually works and you suffer the burden of all these pesky candidates. Thank you very much for coming. I hope uh, we did not violate your human rights and allowed you to eat something. Uh, thank you very much for attending once again and apologies for our late start. Thank you.